everyone, we're the Youth Ambassadors, a group of young leaders at the Heckscher Museum of Art. Welcome to the behind the scenes at the Heckscher Museum. Today we're going to interview Carly Wurzelbacher, who is the curator at the museum. Now we're going to go ask her some questions. Hi. My name is Emma and I'm in sixth grade. And I was wondering, what does a curator do? Uh, hi, Emma, thank you. That's a good question. So a curator does a whole bunch of things, um, but mostly they fall into maybe three categories. So there are uh, exhibitions. So you guys all come to the museum and you see those and those are changing all the time. So a curator uh, puts those together. And then a curator also um, takes care of the permanent collection. So there are artworks that belong to the Heckscher and um, it is my job to make sure that they are well preserved, that they're kept in the right climate conditions, that they're safe. Um, and then it's also my job to research those works and think about the collection and think about uh, what works we should add to the collection. Um, so that it's always kind of growing and becoming um, more comprehensive so that we can tell the story of American art through the collection. And then another big part of the job um, is doing kind of education and outreach and interpretation and really talking to people about the exhibitions and the collection. So I think everything kind of falls into those three groups. Thank you. Hi, my name is Molly and I am in fifth grade. I was wondering what job did you have before you were a curator? Um, what job I had before I was a curator? So a lot of jobs in high school. I worked at a pizza place. Um, I worked at a Hallmark store where they sell like greeting cards. Uh, I worked at an amusement park. Um, all of those things were very fun. Um, and then when I was in college, I started uh, doing jobs in museums. So I wasn't a curator yet, but I was helping um, in the director's office. And then um, I also worked at an art gallery where art is for sale. So at the museum, you can't really buy art. Um, but so before I worked in a museum, I worked at a gallery where the, the artwork was available for sale. And that was a really important um, experience because I got to work a lot with living artists for the first time. Um, so I'm really glad I was able to do that before becoming a curator. Yeah, and I was also wondering what school did you go to and what was your major? Okay, so um, I grew up in Ohio. That's where I'm from and where my family is. So I went to school at um, the Ohio State University, which is in Columbus, Ohio. Anybody been to Ohio? No. <laughs> um, and so my major there was art history. And I also majored in something called um, uh, Middle Eastern Studies, uh, which is kind of like political science or history. Um, so I kind of was going down two different paths. And then um, I decided to keep going to school for art history. So then I went to uh, Hunter College where I got a master's degree in art history. And then I went to the University of Delaware uh, where I received a PhD also in art history. Thanks. So that was kind of cool because I got to live in all different places. Hi, my name is Jack and I'm in seventh grade. What made you become a curator? Um, that is a hard question, but I think it's probably because uh, both of my parents uh, were very creative and um, uh, did painting and woodworking and ceramics and they were also um, interested in history. So when I was your age, I went to a lot of uh, history museums or history festivals and things. <laughs> so 
so I think that um, laid the groundwork for me wanting to, to become an art historian and to be a curator of, of art. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hafsa and I go to fifth grade. So I was wondering who inspired you to become a curator? Who inspired me? So um, I think uh, when once I started working in some of the museum jobs I mentioned, um, I had some really great bosses who encouraged me and who inspired me and who um, kind of made me see that this was something that I could do as a job. Um, and then also some professors that did the same thing were very important in um, and helping me to kind of find this career path. So I think uh, both people I worked with were inspiring to me and then uh, teachers. One more question. When did you start working at the Heckscher Museum? So I started working at the Heckscher Museum about a year and a half ago, um, which is hard to believe because sometimes I feel really new, like I just got here. And then other times I feel like I've been here for a decade, um, but it's really been about a year and a half. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Alexander and I'm in sixth grade. I was wondering, why did you decide to work at the Heckscher Museum of Art? Uh, that is a good question. And I think um, at this point, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see some artwork because I decided to work at the Heckscher because I was really interested in the artwork that we have in the collection. So I thought maybe I would show some of that. Um, so give me just a second. Okay. Okay, except now I made a mistake and I'm showing you um, the end. So let me fast forward to the beginning. Actually, let me start over. <laughs> and also you guys, can you hear me okay? Is our connection good? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so the question was, I believe, why did I decide to work at the Heckscher? And um, what I thought was really interesting, I'm showing you two things on the screen. Um, I was really interested in the, I spoke about the permanent collection and how that's part of the curator's job. And I was really interested in the work that is in the Heckscher's collection. And so I'm showing you two things. Um, one is a painting by Helen Tor. And this reminded me a lot of the snowy days and that we've been having lately. Um, and then, so Helen Tor is an artist who lived and worked in Huntington and on Long Island. Um, and so that was really interesting to me that there are great works of art in the collection. And also I'm showing you a photograph of a, a lot of artists on the beach. Um, and it's pretty incredible how many important artists lived and worked on Long Island. So, um, I think it was that combination of great works in the collection and then the history of art making on Long Island that I thought was really something I could spend um, a long time thinking about and working with. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's Emma again. And I was wondering who are some of the people that you work with? Uh, that is a good question. There are a lot of people that I work with. Um, and that's one thing I like about being a curator is I get to work with all sorts of different people. Um, so here I'm showing you a picture, that's me, um, with the, the artist Amanda Valdez. So uh, as a curator, I work with artists. Um, I also work with um, other art historians like me. Um, and at the Heckscher, I work with all sorts of people, Tammy, um, I work with the education department, I work with the development department, um, I work with the marketing department, so everyone who thinks about um, the museum and operating the museum, I get to work with all of those people, so that, um, so every day is different, which is really great.
Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth and I'm in sixth grade. Where do you get inspiration for galleries and ex exhibitions? Uh, that is a, another great question. Um, and I think inspiration, it comes from all over the place. Um, other museums that I go to, things that I read in books or in the newspaper. Um, when I talk to friends or people I went to school with and I ask them what projects they're working on. Um, I thought maybe I could show you uh, this, which um, all of these artworks um, include depictions of the moon, but I think you can see they're all really different. Um, and so this is an exhibition uh, we're going to have at the museum. So you all will be seeing this um, next year. And it's an exhibition of artwork about the moon. And so the inspiration for this came from a few places. Um, one was just as I was learning about the collection when I was new, um, I just kept seeing the moon um, in works of art from all different time periods in all different places um, in very different styles. So very realistic, um, very abstract uh, photographs, works on paper, paintings, um, European art, American art. So uh, that was, I thought, really interesting. And then I remember um, when some of us were working late on the Amanda Valdez exhibition that I just mentioned, and we came outside at night and there was a huge, beautiful full moon. And I felt like, okay, that's a sign. Let's, we should do this moon exhibition. <laughs> so that's an example of how the inspiration kind of comes from everywhere. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Sylvie and I'm in eighth grade. What makes you choose an artwork to collect and exhibit? Uh, so I, the question is, what makes me choose an artwork to collect and exhibit? Um, and so uh, I feel like I'm a broken record because I keep saying this, but it's it's all sorts of things, <laughs> um, but the Heckscher, um, you know, different museums focus on different things. So um, an exhibit, uh, a museum like the Metropolitan Museum, maybe you've been there in the city, um, that is what we call an encyclopedic museum, meaning they're like an encyclopedia. They do, um, they try to do all art from all times, from all places and, and of all sorts. That's why you can see arms and armor and you can see musical instruments and you can see um, Japanese screens and you can see religious paintings from different cultures. So the Hexer is different in that we have um, a more specific, it's more narrow what we do. Um, and so we mostly, um, focus on European and American art. And we mostly focus on the 19th century, 20th century and 21st centuries. So, you know, right now. Um, and so uh, we're always, we're, so we want to work within those frameworks because that's who we are. Um, but at the same time, we want to show new things, things that maybe people haven't seen before. Um, so what I'm showing you on the screen right now are the two shows we have on view at the museum, um, Connie Fox and Wood Gaylor. And one thing that's interesting, so I know that you guys can see both these artworks are very different. <laughs> these are two very different artists. Um, it's interesting though that they both lived and worked on Long Island. So sometimes that influences the art we do, if there's a, a local or a regional connection. Um, and then uh, they're both uh, very different things that we, um, two artists that I feel like people should know more about. Um, so Connie Fox, this is the first time that we are showing this group of paintings that she made. Uh, and the paintings are based on um, Sammy's Beach, which is a beach on Long Island, more on the East End. 
Um, so this is the first time that this group of work is being shown to the public on Long Island. So, um, and then the other, uh, Wood, Gaylor and American Modernism, uh, this is an artist. So Connie Fox is still living. Um, Wood Gaylor is a historic artist. He lived about a hundred years ago, um, but not many people know about him. So I thought it would be interesting to, um, to share his story with people. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, it's Alex again. Um, I was wondering, how do you decide which art goes where? Uh, which art goes where? That is, um, that is also like a very concise uh, definition of being a curator. Um, and it's something that uh, I think about um, kind of in a conceptual way, but then it's also, there are some very practical considerations when you're thinking about what goes where. So I thought of one example I could show you. Um, and you guys might have seen this um, at the Heckscher in the Long Island Biennial. And so this was an example of um, two artists, again, very different. Um, Claire Watson, whose work is the three smaller things. Um, her work is very abstract and it's made out of um, leather coats, like a leather jacket and she finds them at thrift stores and she cuts them apart and then she sews them back together. And when we were putting this exhibition together and deciding what, what should go where, I uh, thought it was really interesting suddenly to see this portrait of a man wearing a very excellent jacket um, with all of these zippers, which looked to me kind of like the stitches that Claire Watson used. Um, so I thought maybe it would be kind of interesting to put this portrait of someone wearing a coat next to artwork made out of coats. Um, and then it was, it was uh, pretty crazy the way these abstract shapes and colors are really echoed in the background of the portrait. So that was something kind of serendipitous. Um, these artists didn't plan that. Uh, but it was something that just visually I thought was interesting. Um, and I guess the idea of curating would be to help people to see new things or to see artwork in new ways and to kind of do compare and contrast. Uh, so I wanted to set that up for people. Um, but a more practical thing that curators think about um, that you can see on this next slide is you also just have to think about things like um, how big is it? Um, you know, sometimes you, so in, in wanting to balance things out and wanting a show to have, um, you know, where are the most colorful things? Or here I'm showing you a view where you're like looking through a doorway. So that's a place where you wanna put something big and really interesting that grabs people's attention so that they wanna go in that room. So if you put something teensy tiny there that people can't tell what it is when they're in the lobby, um, you know, that's probably not a good idea. So that's an example of how sometimes it's a really kind of conceptual idea about what goes where and other times it's just like practical, like how big is it and how colorful is it? <laughs> Thank you. I was also wondering, um, do you ever loan your artwork to other museums? Yes, that is a very important part of what we do um, because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but our collection that I spoke about, we have 2,300 artworks and our museum, you guys have been there, it is um, not large <laughs> and we can only fit about 100 artworks at any time. So it's really important that if another institution asks us to borrow something, um, absolutely, we want to say yes, because we want as many people to see our artwork as possible. Um, and I have one example I thought I'd show you, which is this one. So this uh, portrait of a mother and child is a work in the Heckscher's collection. And we lent it to a museum in Philadelphia called the Museum of the American Revolution. And what's interesting about that, as you can see, uh, they did something really different. They, they um, 
you know, they painted their walls a dark color and the room was kind of dark and they used a lot of text and different pictures. So um, it's nice that the artworks can be seen in different ways um, in different places. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Charlie and I'm in ninth grade. And my question is, what is your favorite part about being a curator? Uh, my favorite part um, is really uh, getting to do research um, that's based on artworks. And um, it's the thing I love about art history and being a curator, I thought I could try to explain by showing you these images. Um, so what I like about being a curator is that you get to learn a little bit about a lot of different things. So this sculpture uh, by Emma Stebbins, um, it's called Industry. It's from 1860. So it's a 19th century work uh, made at the time of the American Civil War around then. Um, it's in the collection and you can see um, it's a sculpture of a miner, um, like a coal miner. And so in order to learn about this work and to write about it and to understand it, um, there are so many things that I got to look into. So I wanted to learn about mining, like the history of mining and what is this hat he's wearing and what is this tool he's using? Um, so I got to do research on that. And then I wanted to know, well, who is Emma Stebbins? Um, what can we learn about her? So then I learned that she was um, a, an, an American, but who was working in Rome, Italy. Um, so that was interesting. I thought it was interesting that she was a woman working in the 19th century uh, sculpting, um, which was kind of rare. Um, and then in learning about her and her life, then I needed to know about Rome and what was she doing in Rome. And I learned that she would visit this museum that I'm showing you a picture of uh, where she would see ancient Roman sculpture carved out of marble. And she borrowed the pose for her own work is based on some of the work she saw in this museum. So that's an example of all these different pieces of information. It's it's really kind of like being a detective or something, going down these different paths to try to understand where um, an artwork from the past, you know, what does it mean? What is it about? Um, so that's, that's the part I really like. Hi, it's Emma again. And I was wondering what your least favorite part about being a curator was. <laughs> um, gosh, my least favorite part is probably that um, it just feels like there's never enough time because uh, I want to learn all these things and I want to look into everything. And I said, we have 2,300 artworks. So can you imagine, um, you know, I could spend six months just learning about this one sculpture. So it would take me lifetimes <laughs> to learn about 2,300 things. So I think that's the part that um, is the hardest is how to, how to use your time well and prioritize. And um, that's, the, that's one challenging part. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Sylvie again. Are there any other challenges about being a curator? Uh, there are some others. Um, you know, one, one thing that I think is also a little bit, uh, maybe it's not unusual, I don't know, but you, um, when you're a curator and you're managing your time, like I was talking about, there are th things that have to be done by like tomorrow, <laughs> um, you know, cause the exhibitions are always changing. So obviously you've got to be really organized so that you can, uh, and you announce to the public, you know, a new show is coming on March 3rd. So then on March 3rd, you better make sure everything's ready. <laughs> um, so there are always some immediate deadlines, but at the same time, I was telling you about that show called Moonstruck and that show's not gonna happen until 2022, 
which is one year from now, but I, I also need to be working on that. So it's kind of like um, meeting deadlines in the present, but also thinking uh, one year ahead or two years ahead or three years ahead about what the other shows are gonna be. So, um, so it's, I think that's another challenge. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's Charlie again. My question is, what is your favorite exhibition you have ever put together? Okay, so I'm glad that you all shared your questions with me in advance because I would have been really stumped on some of these. Because <laughs> um, it's almost like saying like, what's your favorite food? Or I don't know, it changes. You know, you like different ones at different times. Um, but the one that I'm working on right now, I wanted to show you a little sneak peek. Um, this is going to be pretty awesome and I think is going to be a contender for my favorite because you can see uh, how different the museum is going to look. Um, we're using like really big pictures. Um, we're using this uh, special banner that's going to go along the curved alcove, you know, behind the fountain. Um, so this is all for the exhibition that's celebrating the museum's birthday, 100 years. So I think that's going to be, um, I've been working on it a lot, and I think it's going to be at the top of my list for one of my favorites, um, just because it's, it's going to have all these fantastic components. So this is just a, uh, this is a draft, so it's not going to look exactly like this, but it's going to be something like this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ella and I'm in sixth grade. What's your favorite artwork? Uh, favorite artwork. So I have a few and it's kind of like, I have favorites for different reasons. Um, so one I wanted to, say that is a pretty pretty high on my list as a favorite um, is this work that I, it's on let's see it's on the left of my screen it's the diamond um, this is by Howardina Pindell who um, is an artist who uh, is living a contemporary artist who um, teaches at Stony Brook which is on Long Island and uh, I like this work because it's very big. First of all, it's just massive. Um, I think, and then there's, there are so many things about it that are different. The shape is really unusual. Um, and I don't, it's hard to see in this image, but it's, uh, the work is not framed. Um, it, you just kind of tack it right to the wall. So that's different. Um, and then it also has this little piece at the bottom, which is made out of a mirror and like a kind of doll that has nails stuck in it. <laughs> um, so the work, there's a lot to look at. There's a lot of color. Um, there are also uh, words all over the painting in different languages. And the words are, um, they say love or friendship in different languages. So I think that that's a pretty nice message. Um, and then the title of this work it's called Relationships Kandinsky Number One. So this is why I'm showing you these other images. So I'm showing you a painting by an artist named, uh, his last name is Kandinsky. And so you can see um, Kandinsky worked about a hundred years ago. And you can see how Howardina Pindell is looking back at his work. And so it's almost like she's uh, in her artwork, she's talking about who are her favorite artists. So she really likes Kandinsky. And then she also is really interested in African art. So I'm showing you an African um, sculpture that has a different nail stuck into it. And so that's where her idea for the, um, this component that rests on the ground is coming from. So just like the words in the picture are spelling out um, love in different languages, she's looking at very different types of art and bringing them together in the same work. Um, so it's a favorite because, you know, you could look at it and talk about it 
uh, you could see it, you know, every day for a year and you'd probably see something else. Um, so it's a very rich piece. Okay. Uh, so uh, the another question was, um, did I have a favorite, let's see, a favorite type of art or favorite artist or both? It was favorite artist. Favorite artist. Okay. So um, I have uh, two artists who are tied right now uh, for favorite. <laughs> um, and one is named uh, Jack Witten, and I'm showing you his picture here. Um, and he um, passed away recently, so he's no longer with us, but I got to meet him and talk to him in his studio. So you can see him, he's sitting in this fantastic space and he makes uh, made both paintings and sculptures. So you can see the painting hanging on the wall and you can see some uh, wood in the studio. Um, and then this fork I'm showing you, um, that's called Lucy. Um, and so this is another example of an artist who um, there's so much information uh, packed into this work um, called Lucy. Um, and it's a very abstract piece, but I think you can probably see it's kind of human-like because it's standing up straight like humans do. Um, and it has this, a person's name, Lucy. Um, and what I really love, I'm showing you uh, the head of Lucy, because it's almost like you can see her thoughts racing, like just shooting along these wires. And um, this is another example of an art, an artist who challenged me to learn things like, what are all these little pieces? I had to learn about uh, the insides of a computer. <laughs> um, um, so, and then also learn about wood carving and, um, Jack Witten's work uh, also had some very personal elements. So like the steel beam at the bottom that related to um, Bessemer, Alabama, which is a, a steel place uh, where he grew up. And then he also spent time on the island of Crete. Um, and so that block of marble uh, comes from there. So again, that idea of just layering all sorts of information and places, um, but he was also just a very nice person and he was very generous. So I could say to him, what is going on in this work? And he would really explain it and talk me through it. Um, and he was uh, just very kind and interesting. Um, so he was a favorite. Um, and then the other person I wanted to mention is um, an artist, a painter called Joan Mitchell. Uh, she is a more, um, historic artist. Uh, so she died in the early 90s. So I never knew her. Um, but as an art historian, I got to read her letters, uh, the letters that she wrote to people and the letters she received. So um, I feel like I know her even though I didn't, <laughs> um, because that's very personal to read someone's correspondence. Um, and she was just a really um, kind of tough lady. And she did whatever she wanted and she really made this interesting life for herself um, and made some really kind of powerful and, and beautiful paintings. Um, so they are uh, two very different artists, different people, um, but, you know, tied for favorite. <laughs> One last question. Do you okay. have a favorite type of art? I do, and I'm glad you asked me this. Um, and I like how you phrase it to type of art um, because there is something, uh, this is what I wrote my uh, dissertation on when I went to school. Um, and it's a type of art called reverse painting on glass. <laughs> and so you can see what this artist is doing. Uh, her name was Rebecca Salisbury James. And it's instead of painting on um, canvas or, you know, drawing on paper, the support is glass, a clear piece of glass. So you can think about um, how hard that is. It's fragile, first of all, you don't want to break it. It's very smooth, so there's no friction. And then um, it's called reverse painting because you paint like she is. You hold the glass facing you, but you're painting back here so that the picture uh, comes through. So you have to 
really change your the way your mind works. <laughs> you have to layer things in different order. Um, and so this was a, a something I'm still thinking about um, from my dissertation research. And it's pretty incredible that she could create, this is an example of one of her paintings, like such a meticulous, precise image working in this really difficult way. Um, so that would be a, a favorite type of art. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's what's behind me also, uh, glass paintings. <laughs> Well, um, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate that you took the time to answer our questions. And as for those of you that are watching this video, uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to um, go on hexer.org for more programs like this one. Once again, thank you so much and see you all next time.